it's seven o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. I'm Emily, and welcome to the Say No to Diabetes Complications, but Say Yes to Reducing Your Risk, Keeping Your Kidneys, Nerves, and Eyes Healthy. Uh, and you'll see at the bottom that there is a phone number, 1-800-263-6317. That's the number to call if you're having any issues uh, whatsoever. And I'm Emily. Uh, I'm one of the coaches here with Cecilia Health. And uh, and Lavina will be our presenter here tonight, but I'll go ahead and welcome us here. Uh, if you'll go to the next slide, please. Um, so our our program here, it is an interactive program. We, uh, we formatted that there's a, a presentation here in the beginning. Hopefully some of the information is new information to you. Hopefully some of it is stuff that you and your doctor have already talked about, but you will also see uh, off to the right in your webinar toolbar, there is a question section. So at the very end, there will be a time uh, for kind of a Q&A time. And we, we do request if you have any questions or need some clarification, please put your questions there uh, for Lavina to address at the very end of our webinar tonight. And just as a disclaimer, um, as, as you know, uh, uh, tonight we will be providing with you with a lot of information that you may be motivated to make some lifestyle changes. But before you do so, we do request that you please consult with your physician first before making any changes to your current routine. And the Cecilia Health Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist will provide strategies to help you with managing your diabetes. But this online Q&A session is intended to give general advice. And this information is not a substitute for personal medical advice and involves the professional opinion of the CDCES with Cecilia Health as well. So, um, and you, you'll see here our, um, the last little bit that I have for tonight, uh, here if you'll go to the next screen, is uh, welcoming our leader here tonight, Lavina Malone. With that, she is a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. And she has experience working with patients who have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and overall with general with individuals who are striving for weight loss for the past 19 years. She lives in Connecticut with her family and in her free time, she enjoys walking, playing the piano, trying to become fluent in Spanish, reading and dabbling in art as well. So uh, welcome, Lavina. Thank you so much for your time tonight and we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, um, hi everybody. It's so nice to be able to talk with you tonight. Um, Tonight, we're going to be talking about a serious topic, but an important topic. And despite the seriousness of it, I think there's a lot of power in learning about what these um, possible issues can be and how we can help prevent it. One of the things I love about working in diabetes is that so many of these things are largely avoidable. Diabetes can be very serious, but it's largely avoidable. Um, so, so we'll be going into what are these complications that can occur, and we're going to be focusing on what is microvascular complications, and what what I mean by what I say when I say microvascular complication. In addition to that, we'll talk about how to prevent that, prevent any of these complications. And then there will be some time at the end for you to be able to ask some questions that we may not have answered already. And to maybe if you have something to share as well, because um, all of you are vast, uh, you have a lot of knowledge in diabetes yourself from your personal experiences, and you may have something to share um, with everybody else um, of something that's helped you. So, um, I'm sorry, I didn't change the slide. I'm not used to being the slide changer. Um, so just before we get into all this, um, the I do wanna make a quick note that everybody with diabetes may have diabetes, but they're not all the same people. So this really should be very individualized. Um, and the best way to be able to individualize this is to talk with your healthcare provider. Um, before making any changes. So if you have any questions about it or how this applies to you in your life, um, you could talk about it at your next visit with your primary care provider or whoever it is that helps you manage your diabetes conditions. Um, so what is what are microvascular complications? 
um, what we're referring to is really uh, when diabetes can start to damage the small blood vessels of our body. Um, so you can think of the circulatory system as the highway systems of our body, how we get blood to every part of our body. Um, and there are big blood vessels as you get closer to the heart and then tiny ones as we get to the far parts of our body. Um, we're gonna be focusing today on where the blood vessels get smaller and um, why these small blood vessels can get damaged is because there can be too much blood sugar in the bloodstream, which um, you would be able to know when there is too much blood sugar by maybe checking at home and seeing that it's higher or even if you don't do that, um, having the A1C for those who check or those who don't, having an A1C every three to six months is recommended. Usually every three months if your blood sugars, if your A1C is out, not in the ideal range and every six months if it's doing pretty well. Um, and for most people that would be defined as an A1C under 7%. But again, this is all individualized so you can confirm with your doctor about what is the right A1C for you with your medical history. Um, in addition to that, small blood vessels can be damaged by um, having high blood pressure. A lot of people with diabetes also have high blood pressure. In fact, high blood pressure is a risk factor to have diabetes. Um, so usually what we're looking for is a blood pressure under 130 over 80. And again, I said usually, this should be individualized by your doctor. Um, so when we're talking about small blood vessels and how they can be damaged, what does that mean as far as how it affects your body? We're going to be focusing on certain parts of the body which can be more commonly affected by damage to the small blood vessels. Um, those parts are the eyes, nerves and feet, and the kidneys. So we'll start with the eyes. Um, high blood sugars can cause some what we call acute problems with the eyes and long and chronic or long term. So acute is short term, chronic is long term. Um, blurry vision can often be a sign of a short term problem. If you're having high blood sugars for a while, it can make your vision look a little different for a while. And you may not want to buy a pair of glasses at that point. You'll want to see if you can get your blood sugars under control and then your eyesight may come back to normal. You would talk to your doc eye doctor about exactly what is going on with you, if it's a short-term problem, and if they think your eyesight will come back to normal. But a lot of times it's a temporary thing if you're having high blood sugar for a period of time that's really high. Now, if it's just a short period of time, then we can have a short-term problem. Typically, the long-term problems happen from having high A1C or high blood sugars and high blood pressure for a long time period um, and or high blood pressure. Um, so what we didn't, you will not know that your eyes are being damaged by your blood sugars or blood or your blood pressure by just not seeing anything different from your vision. Um, the only way you really know that nothing's going on in the background is by having a yearly eye exam. Um, so that's how you would know if something's going on for sure. Um, and if the doctor saw something, they could see you more often and then be able to take steps like they have laser surgery for uh, retinopathy where the diabetes can start to affect the blood vessels in the back of your eye. And to prevent any loss of vision, they can uh, do that if they needed to. But it, you know, even if they didn't need eye surgery yet, you can take, you can become aware of the problem and take preventative measures too. Um, other things that can happen are cloudy vision or an increase in eye pressure. So again, we wanna have a dilated eye exam at least once a year for most people. And then if the doctor says more often, you can always go in more. Um, and remember that if you don't see any changes in your vision, it does not mean that there's any there aren't changes going on in your eyes uh, because you may not see something happen until the very last, um, until the, the eye disease is to the point where you have blindness. Um, and we don't want that. Um, so unfortunately, I, I, diabetes is a, one of the most common causes of blindness in the United States. 
but it is largely preventable by good blood sugars, good blood pressure, and having that yearly exam. Um, so again, good blood sugars, good blood pressure are really important. And it can be easier said than done to have these, these, these things in control. And that's why if you're currently with your coach uh, through our program, you can talk with them about how to get these under control. And also, if you are a graduate of our program in the past, you could always seek out a local program, a diabetes education program or a dietitian, or talk to your doctor um, and talk about how can I get these under control. Um, so another area of where we can have microvascular complications is neuropathy. And then that just means diabetic, or it means nerve disease. And in particular, we're looking at the ones caused by diabetes. Um, so high blood sugar can damage the nerves. And where we tend to find it is, is in the hands, legs, and feet. Um, and it can start in the farther extremities like the hands or feet and tend to work its way up. Unfortunately, this is one of the most common complications in diabetes, and it can be um, quite debilitating if it's if it progresses with um, pain, burning, tingling, or pins and needle, needle, needles um, sensations, or loss in sensation in your in your hands or feet. Um, so this is not a a good thing because um, when we have nerve damage, you may also have small blood vessel issues with um, that that make it so you don't get the the blood to the the wounds that might be there to so sores can be healed so they might develop into a, little sores might turn into a wound that wouldn't have otherwise we have dry and cracked skin more often and if you think of it the skin is the first barrier against infection so if it's dry and cracks we have kind of an open invitation to the bacteria in the world um, you could have swollen or bluish feet. You could have legs or feet that hurt during exercise. It's called peripheral um, PID or peripheral arterial disease, I believe it is. Um, and then there's legs that hurt or feel, feel restless at night. Um, so it definitely can affect life. But when we combine this with circulation, it's a particularly dangerous combination because that um, it can lead to people having serious wounds that can need attention right away. So first of all, if you were to nick your foot or you had something in your shoe and you walked around on it all day, you might not feel it as much if you've lost some of the feeling in your feet. And you may not be able to feel if there's too much heat or cold or pressure or pain on your feet. Um, the most common cause of a wound is constant wearing against your foot. So ill-fitting shoes can also be a culprit. Um, so you may not notice if there's a solar or a blister or other injury um, in the beginning stages, and that sore can become infected. And then on top of that, if there's not good blood flow to it, it makes it harder to fight the infection. And on top of that, if blood sugars are above 180, your immune system may not be able to fight it as well. So all these things together can um, put you at great risk for a, a sore to become an infected uh, sore and then become a serious wound that can lead towards an amputation of your toes or your foot or your leg. Um, and that I know is really scary. The good news is we do know a lot of things that can help with that. Um, trying to get the, oops, there we go. It wasn't responding for a second, okay. So, so there are things we can do to help prevent having amputations. Um, so checking your feet daily is one important step to take. Uh, if you can't see the bottoms of your feet, maybe ask a, uh, someone who lives near, near you or in the house or a friend or a family member to check your feet for you. Or another option is to get one of those diabetes foot mirrors that you can get online or to go to the auto parts store and get an ex a mirror with an extendable arm. And that way you can see the bottoms of your feet. Um, so checking your feet every day for anything that's different on your foot, particularly if it looks like there's anything infected, you wanna call your doctor that day if you can or seek help. Um, 
so you can catch it before it progresses quickly. Um, but if you have something like a callus or a corn, you can always just have your doctor take care of it the next visit. Um, if it doesn't look infected. If it's infected, we need immediate care. So every time you visit your health clinic, you can also make sure that you take off your shoes and socks to have your feet checked. So once a year, we want to have something that looks like what's being done in this picture right here. This is a monofilament, it's called. Um, you don't have to remember that, but it's just something that pokes your foot that a lot of doctors use. And they're just checking to see how well you can feel things. Um, it doesn't hurt, it's like a fishing wire. So it's just something to see if you feel it, feel well on your feet. They'll also probably check your circulation. But it doesn't hurt to have your shoes and socks off at every visit, even if it's not that annual check. And just ask them to take a look. Um, so here's an example of a mirror with an extendable arm, so you can check the bottoms of your feet. Um, and you want to make sure that you look between the toes. Um, and you can always ask for help if you need it. And call your doctor right away again if you have a sore on your foot. When you're taking care of your feet, one thing you can do is make sure you wash your feet every day. Usually when people are checking their feet, they do it after the shower. So that would include washing your feet every day. And then you might want to put um, lotion on. We'll talk about that on the next screen uh, after the shower. But test the water first when you're washing your feet with your wrist or elbow to make sure it's not too hot, somewhere where you have good sensation to tell the temperature of the water. And then afterwards, you want to make sure you dry your feet well, including between your toes. It's really hard to dry out in between the toes, and then if it doesn't, it could lead to fungal infections. Um, don't soak your feet because this can cause dry skin cracking again. When dry skin can crack again, remember, and that is an open invitation to bacteria and infections. So after you wash your feet, putting lotion on from the top to the bottom, but maybe avoiding in between the toes so that it can stay dry. Um, you probably don't want to use lotions that have perfume or alcohol. And if you want to know a specific brand of lotion, I would recommend to talk to with your doctor about what they recommend for you. Um, when you're another um, part of taking care of your feet is to take care of your toenails. Some people do have them taken care of by their podiatrist, or I've heard of some people getting it taken care of with a month's, once monthly visit from a nurse at a senior center. If you do it yourself, trim your toenails straight across with a nail file. Don't use nail clippers. Um, see your doctor for any problems like corns, calluses, and warts. Don't use razors on, on your feet. Um, that would increase your risk of infection. Another big thing is um, probably to get rid of those sandal thongs. Um, and to wear shoes that fully um, cover your, your feet with hard soles. So even in the house, I know this can be a hard one for some people, even in the house to wear hard soled slippers to protect your feet um, because we love being able to walk around and using our, use our feet. So wearing comfortable shoes that fully protect and cover your feet all year round. So water shoes would be an option when you're on the beach. Shake out your shoes and socks before you put them on to remove any small objects like rocks. Um, I heard of a one instance where somebody had a golf tee in their shoe and it went into their foot because they didn't feel it and they walked around on it all day. So just uh, shaking out your shoes. Never go barefoot even inside. Um, and how do we prevent these foot problems besides these daily foot care um, uh, advice that we've given you so far? is to keep your blood sugars under control. And then this is particularly important with those who smoke. Uh, this I mean, this is one of the things that's a, it increased on, it, if you were, were to talk about any of the complications and, and some of the things, some of the complications that you increase the risk of if you smoke, this is one of those that's really important to quit smoking with, but it's really important for all the complications. Um, I know it's easier said than done, just um, reaching out to your doctor, looking up um, at resources online, talking with your health coach about how to quit. Um, the other, the last area of where 
the small blood vessels can be damaged and it affects, increases your risk of complication as we're gonna talk about the kidneys. Um, so kidneys, the kidneys are kind of an organ everybody hears of, but you may not know what it does. And what it does is it cleans the blood and filters out the waste and keeps the good parts in our body. So, um, but the things we were talking about before that can affect increase your risk of complications were high blood sugar and high blood pressure. And those do affect your risk of having kidney, kidney disease as well. Like eye disease, you may think you're doing okay, but you don't know when things are starting to happen unless your doctor assesses it. So this is where it's important to have, see, uh, have a doctor do some tests every year to make sure your kidneys are doing okay because you may not have any symptoms at first. Um, towards the later stages, if you, the waste that it's supposed to remove is not being removed, then that, then people can start to feel sick. At the very last stages is when um, people have dialysis as an option where they can use a machine to filter out waste from the blood instead of the kidneys because they aren't any, able to do it anymore. So for kidneys, um, you can think of them as a colander. So again, they keep the good stuff in and they get rid of the waste. So just like if you were to drain pasta from a pot of water, if you wanted to get rid of the water, it gets rid of the water, but it keeps the pasta. Um, so the reason why we do a test every year on your urine is to um, see if there's beginning signs of the kidney starting to get damaged, which would mean the colander is getting a little leaky or, the, or it's starting to leak into the, the urine, some of the stuff it's supposed to keep, which is a protein actually that they're looking for called microalbumin. So protein is a large molecule and our body needs it. So it normally doesn't go out into the urine. When protein starts to show up in urine, that's a sign to the doctor that some kidney damage has likely started. So how do we keep our kidneys healthy? You wanna have that urine test every year that's called microalbumin. Albumin is the protein. Um, drinking lots of water helps give your kidneys uh, an easier time filtering things out. Get help to quit smoking. Take all your medications as directed. Stay active and healthy. And to stay, the definition of staying active for most people is trying to get in 30 minutes of cardio exercise where you raise your heart rate a little bit. Um, most days of the week, so about 100, 150 minutes a week. But that again is individualized, so talk with your doctor about it and also to see if it's safe for you to start a, a, a physical activity. Eating healthy, that's a big topic on its own. There'll be another um, webinar at some point about eating healthy, but you also can talk with your health coach in this program about that or um, seek out a program nearby if you're not currently in the program. So, and most importantly, to prevent kidney disease, we get back to those blood sugars and blood pressure. So talking with your doctor, your diabetes educators about how to help keep your blood sugar under control and keep your blood pressure under control. So that wraps up talking about the microvascular complications. This is the time when you guys can ask questions and let me know what you want to know about. Was there something that wasn't answered that you'd like to learn about? And Emily, I would just see this under the questions part, right? Yes, correct, yep. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions yet, so I'll just, uh, bring up a, maybe something that I hear people ask about a lot. Um, are pedicures okay? Um, so a lot of people are fervent fans of pedicures and the, unfortunately the answer is not okay um, because it's soaking the feet um, and soaking the feet dries out the skin and makes it more likely to crack. On top of that, those who do pedicure, the, the people who are giving you the pedicures often use razors and that's just not very safe. And we, and if you still decided to have a pedicure despite my advice, make sure that they clean the tub as well as possible. Staph infections are 
terrible. So um, I think that can be a place to get staph infections, unfortunately. So they need to thoroughly clean the tub and their instruments. But um, and also hot pads. Um, if you're using hot pads, it's probably not a good idea either because you may not feel as well if it's starting to burn your skin. Um, and so it's probably not a good idea to use it. Uh, and it might dry out the skin, I think, too. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I thought maybe I'd bring up one more thing. Can exercise help me reduce the risk? And I think indirectly, yes. Um, so exercise is a tool to help you reduce your blood sugars and your blood pressure, which are those two things that help keep your body in health, uh, healthy and at low risk for complications. Um, so if you wanted to have a better blood pressure, exercise helps you get there. And it also may help a little bit with weight loss, which also helps with your blood pressure and blood sugars. Um, weight loss helps with, uh, with the blood sugars more in the beginning stages, but it certainly helps you still, even in the later stages, still have a, a lower blood sugar at that moment and um, help you kind of maintain a healthy weight and um, help you have more energy and ability to do the activities you like. Um, and everything, even if we didn't talk about macrovascular, large blood vessels, everything, every time I talk about diabetes, I'm also talking about heart disease because unfortunately it is a sister disease to diabetes. So if we can help blood pressure with exercise then and cholesterol, then that's uh, a great thing. Cholesterol is also something you'll probably wanna watch for helping reduce that macrovascular issue. Um, somebody asked about dental health, please. Oh, that's a good question. So there is a higher risk of having gum disease in diabetes. And if you make, it makes sense when we talk about how small blood vessels get affected by blood sugars and blood pressure. So the advice for keeping your gums healthy is to do what most people are recommended to do. It's just more important, which is to brush your teeth twice a day, spending about two minutes on each on your teeth at a time. A powered toothbrush may do a better job and helps you make sure you do two minutes. And then flossing every day is also really important. Your doctor, your dentist, which is, I guess, a doctor too, um, will be able to individualize that care plan. Like some people, in addition to that, might use a water pick or an interdental brush or uh, a rubber tip that goes along the gum line. Um, there are different tools that they can use if they think you need it. Um, and, but as I understand it, the water, you can check, double check with your dentist, the water pick does not replace the flosser, flossing. Um, and you can talk about it with your dentist about the actual technique, but it, my dentist has recommended to treat it like polishing a shoe, you know, wrapping the, the floss around your tooth and going up and down and rubbing back and forth with it. And make sure you go a little bit below the gum, not where it hurts, but you can double check that with the doctor. That's not my, specialty on that. But um, the most important thing is to see the dentist every six months for most people, unless they want to see you more often, and um, to brush twice a day and floss once daily. Let me know if that answered your question. If if it didn't, you can ask another one on the um, prompt. Oh, he said yes, thank you, or she. Um, so, yeah, and, do you think uh, that's about it, Emily? Yeah, I and I was going to say thank you so much. I, I felt like, Lavina, uh, if you haven't already talked to your doctor about exactly what Lavina was saying, where she went into very in-depth in terms of, especially with foot care, if you're not having that dialogue with your doctor, please do start it. Um, and you'll see here on the next slide, we do have our upcoming webinars. I know she talked just talked about exercise. Uh, our next webinar is uh, solely focused on exercise and diabetes, so please check that out uh, on our website. And uh, here in June, we have one all about 
myths uh, surrounding diabetes. We've all heard a lot of stuff. We read a lot of stuff on di uh, online about it, so please check that out. Uh, also, uh, please be in communication with your health coach. You can check us out on Facebook as well um, it, with Cecilia Health if you have additional questions. But thank you all again so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.